Hello, everyone. Welcome to the What Af podcast with me, Gareth Ike, and you, Richard of the Willet. Yes. Um, what I like is that we've basically developed a uniform now. <laughs> a lumberjack theme. Yeah. Though, right? Yeah. We should have phoned ahead. I feel like a bridesmaid. Yeah. You're wearing, you're wearing the same outfit, and it's like, ugh, neither of us are the bride. <laughs> Absolutely. But we're going to get drunk, and we're going to mess it all up for everyone. So. Oh, I'm shagging the best man. <laughs> so am I. Whilst you... later on. Yeah, we'll yeah. It afterwards, in. afterwards, I'll go first. <laughs> yeah, I'll you go do... first because I'm tired. Yeah, you get it out of the way first. But technically, I'm a few months older than you, so surely that's the way these things should go. Well, so you go first. Yeah. You you go first, then I'll go on the dance floor and get drunk and teary, and then I'll come up afterwards. Yeah, Yeah. all right. After living on a prayer, that's your cue. Is it? Yep. Yeah. This this song. This is my song. One of those. (laughs) One of those moments. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's really embarrassed. You got your hand ready. Go. This is so much about my life. Yeah, yeah. And then I walk in carrying the bouquet, and because I've caught it, and the best man shits himself, legs it. (laughs) And then someone's pissing in the clock. It's good. Good, good, good weddings. So what have we got? <laughs> what have we got this week in in Clownland? Let's should we start with the ASDA story? Have you got your dad's yeah. website? Yeah. Well, as, ASDA are, are quite good anyway in terms of being annoying. So we spoke last time, I think, about the COVID marshals and the fact they're bringing in thousands of these COVID marshals to just stand there and go, "Have you got a mask, sir?" Um, but now you can get a drive-through flu jab. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you drive in, you do your shopping, fill up the car, and on the way out, you wind down the window and someone sticks a prick in it, which sounds a lot like dogging. It sounds exactly yeah. like dogging, doesn't it? Yeah, very yeah. Stan Collymore. That is really... Can you... Do they specify where on the body that you could be pricked? Any holes a goal in it. I'm kind of going towards, can you put your ass out your window? Do you know what? That's. I'm assuming that they want to go for the arm, but that would be quite a funny way of doing it. Although I don't want to get a flu shot, so I'm not going to, you know, risk it for a laugh. But I do like the idea of of just whack, whacking your pants down and just sticking your ass out the window and going, "Do your worst, son." Yeah, and then patting yeah. it. On is that Asda? Where they pat the che- cheek? Was it Asda or was, was it that? Tesco's? Every Tesco's. every little help. Yeah, it's Tesco's. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, in Asda, I don't think they had one. I think their their slogan because it was something. like dun 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 dun, dun and then the, the bum tap was a dun dun at the end. Yeah, yeah. I was think it, it was Asta. I think it was Asta. I'm not sure. Write in, guys. Comment below because these are the important any, things. If you just Google "woman slaps ass" and then just hit Google Images, I'm sure it will come up with Asta <laughs> straight away. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I'm actually yeah. gonna do that. So, guys, I'm yeah. googling. Woman slaps ass. Um, no, I'm Can not. you share the screen? I will. I don't know how to do that. I'm not technically capable of doing these things. You I mean, to... I'm not. I'm not particularly tech. I'm just. I'm looking at the button that says share screen. I'm just wondering if that might. <laughs> that might do it. Oh. Wait a minute. You are right. Okay. Here you go. So, what image is coming? You're some up? sort of like wizard. Did it You're work? A wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Woman felt helpless after being bum slapped by group. I'm sure you mean she's not talking about like the wanted, or that's, yeah, that's not a nice story though, is it? I was thinking just hit images at the top. Oh, yeah. Then I'm glad we're browse, dealing with browse history with, with the. <laughs> no, no. Oh, that's rubbish. They're, they're rubbish, aren't they? You've got a picture of a woman, a man, a woman smacking a child's bum, a kid who looks like he's on heroin. And a police woman. And a police and a grab a woman a man grabbing a waitress's ass. Bum. This is no. not what I was either hoping or expecting. It's research for you though, isn't it? Should yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Should we read a yeah, bit? Let's read the story, yeah, go on then. You Supermarket do it. Asda has launched a free NHS drive through flu jab service for eligible people at thirteen UK stores. I wonder where they are. Anyone entitled to free jabs, such as the elderly, frontline NHS workers and pregnant women, can use the service. People regarded as non-vulnerable can get their flu jabs for eight quid. Bargain. Uh, Which Asda claims is, I've got something in front of that on my screen. Cheapest on the market. 
that's great, isn't it? Trying to outdo yourself with a uh, with a flu jab. You're trying to un- undersell yeah. yourself with a flu jab. It's weird, isn't it? It's like it used to be like you know price check. Can you can you do a loaf of bread cheaper? Yeah. Yeah, but now yeah you can get a a, a suspicious concoction that for is, cheaper. That is. It's wonderful. a weird. It's a, it's a weird world we live in, isn't it? It is a weird world we live in. Um, but that's the whole point of the What Have podcast, isn't it? That it's very much what the actual fuck is happening. It gets worse each week, doesn't it? Did you? Did you who was it? Was it Como that came out and did the mask thing outside that big oh, building? Was that Como? Jesus wept. I don't know who that was, but it made me literally want to set fire to my own face. He comes out of his house. He puts the mask on. Sit. The mu- The music's playing like it's like the fucking dam busters. Um, he puts the thing on and he goes like that, right? And <laughs> he salutes like an empty car park. Yeah. And turns around back into his house with his mask on. Amazing. Like, what does that even mean on any on any conceivable level other than you're a knobhead? Do you think they're trolling people now? Do you think they're just they're taking 100%, a piss? They're 100% trolling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's so much trolling going on. See... It sort of amuses me when Trump trolls because yeah. he's so obviously trolling. And although I'm not a fan of Trump, his trolling does amuse me. Um, but yeah, the rest of them, they are just going, right, yeah, shall we? Let's let's just see what these idiots do. Like like with Italy yesterday, that's another what off. So it's the law now in Italy to wear a mask whenever you leave your house. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter where you doesn't matter where you go in. Doesn't matter if you're going for a walk. Doesn't matter if you're climbing Mount Vesuvius. You have to have a mask on, even if you're nowhere near anyone. Amazing. Cheers for that. Um, and it were also it was also saying that actually people should probably think about whether or not they should be doing it in their own houses as well. Well, I've thought about it, and I think you're an idiot. Yeah. Like, that's that's how I'm going. But but you can see that that's what's coming here in a few weeks time you know how long until they're going to try and force that here because everything that's happening there you you just hear lots of people here go oh they won't do that here well they they just have they just have yeah so they will do obviously because it's a it's a global script isn't it well, they so they try to i mean literally i think in the in the uk we're all a little i don't say we're all but there's many of us that are a little bit more i found this guy doing it by the way it was a new york city governor um so that is Como, isn't it? I think it is Como, but it doesn't look like Como. It looks like a, an older Como. I don't know if he's got his dad to do it. Um, maybe he's just not as quick as he used to be. Now maybe he's, he's slow mo. <laughs> or yeah, I was going to go for a slightly risky joke there, but I'll, I'll, I'll back off that one. Um, yeah, I don't know if they'll get away with it here as easy because I'm, I'm blatantly not going to wear one. You're not going to wear one. I think they just. I no, don't think it's you... easy here. Me and you are lucky though, because me and you just have to colour colour our lips in, <laughs> which I do, don't we? Yeah, and just make sure we don't smile, and then I'll just go. I've got a, a beard looking mask. Yeah, I've got beard burka. Can't say burka. Yeah, so if I if I can, I don't know if you can see this. I've got quite a lot of grey, like a freaking Yorkshire terrier. Yeah, but if I paint it, colour that in. Yeah, done. That's that's it. Sorted. Yeah, and your lips black so, black must black uh, lipstick. That'll yeah, do. A bit of charcoal on my teeth. Be laughing. Yeah. But um, I hope you're right, Rich. I do. But but I am also of the... And I, and I think it's quite a valid opinion based on quite a lot of life experience that people are idiots. They are. I think it's like, mm. a, like a disease in itself. It's like idiotis. It, it spreads very quickly from one person to the next. And it is born of, born of fear... Born of not wanting to say that that's mental, isn't it? And we used to say that in the UK a lot. Like that's fucking, that's weird. Stop it. It's mental. You can't. Yeah. You can't say mental anymore. You're not allowed to say mental. You have to say I don't know what you, what the term is now. Extra brain facilities, and it's it's Actually. kind of now people are afraid to this whole woke thing. Afraid to say that's mental. Stop it. And you have to have a reason. Well, what do you mean? Why is it mental? What did, it's called common sense. Like I don't have to. I shouldn't have to explain yeah. to you why that's mental. I yeah, exactly. I, do you know what I mean? To explain it is mental in itself. So look at it on a level and go, okay. So if you believe the narrative, 
cases and um, hospitalizations and deaths were basically non-existent. Then you introduce mandatory masks. Now they're apparently going through the roof. So let's introduce masks in more places. Yeah. What well, that explain that. In fact, explain the fact that the thing behind you says wonky house. I've only just noticed that. That was a podcast I used to do ages ago, which was similar to this, where we used to look at the weird things in the world. And we used to say that we lived in a wonky house. How world's a wonky house. I like it. It's good, isn't I it? I like it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good, yeah. We do live in a wonky house, though, don't we? It's, it's extraordinary now. Um, although I'm like you, like I'm not doing stuff. Like, they stick up their arse, really. And I think people just need some some courage. Um, yeah. Me and Charlie you know, Robinson and think... did a podcast the other day, and we said the same thing, Gaz, is that the generations below us have been watered down. There is no fire in the belly anymore. There's no, no. Like, righteous anger. No. Like, fuck off. No. Just, you piss me no, off. No, because they've had everything so easy. I think that's a lot of the problem. You know, they've not necessarily had things easy um, in the long run, and I think you will certainly find that out as they get older, psychologically destroyed. But at the same time, you know, young uns weren't, you know, they didn't have an outside toilet that they had to go to. Like we, we joked about that last week. Like they didn't have these things that they, these challenges and stuff like that. It's very much, here's your iPad, son, just get on with life. And, you know, oh my God, I need a safe space because Hillary lost. Um, and all this sort of nonsense. And obviously these people are now, you know, facing an absolute challenge for their very existence and way of life. And they haven't got Scooby-Doo what to do about it. No. And they just, you know, they don't know how to argue. I mean, I, I was on, I was, you know, rightly or wrongly, I was on protests when I was, God knows how young, primary school, on protests with family in, in London, you know, fighting against criminal justice bill and, and, and you know, fuck, we were fighting the new world order then. Um, so for me, it's totally normal. It's like, that's bullshit. Are you going to have it? Obviously not. Yeah. Because that's not what you do when you get bullshit. You don't have it. Because it's men. Um because it's mental and I'm yeah. not doing it. And you could stick it up your ass, mate. You can stick your mask up your ass. But this is the and thing, what you're saying there. Too. But this is what you're saying there, and, and, and I've got a bit serious, but it really is important, is that that should be the end of. And when you're dealing with psychopaths and, and, and sociopaths, there, there has to be an end of discussion. Fuck off, no, get away from me. There, there exactly. is no... Pro, like, this is... I, I see what people are doing at the protests. I totally agree with the protests. I think that was fantastic what everybody's been doing and I've, uh, and all of these declarations that have been sent um, put forward. But it goes to show that these psychopaths will only understand possibly being dragged out of there, forced out of there, because they're psychopaths. And there's no reasoning with these people. They're not playing our games. They're not playing by the rules they set out. So no. like, if you say, fuck off, no, I'm not having it. Fuck off, no. That is a powerful thing. No, fuck off. Leave me alone. That that kind of has yeah. to come back, I think, in people now, because we're well, lost I, I, without I, it. I'm, I'm at that. I'm at that point now. I'm angry now. Like I'm angry now, and um and so you know, like I I would very much reason with people. I mean, granted, no one's been hassling me anyway, but like I'll just walk into a shop and no one says anything. Um, but I mean, I got challenged once on a boat, and I just carried on walking, and that was done. But um. So, okay, I haven't, but I've had conversations with people. It's going to blah, 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 and I, I end up reasoning with them. Like, kind of like, look, this is why, this is this, this is that. You need to look at this study, this and that, this and that. And, and some of them, fine, but most of them aren't arguing in good faith anyway. They're never going to go away and actually yeah. look at stuff and then come back and go, actually, fair point. They're not going to do that. So, exactly, the attitude now. If I get challenged now, I'm not going to start talking to someone about the PCR test. I'm just going to tell them to fuck off. Mm. And... um. A friend of mine, Matt, he did that on the first day that it became mandatory. I mean, granted, he's a big lad, but he said he was stood in a queue for a shop and a guy turned around, guy, some guy in his 40s, and was like, where's your mask? So I was like, so what did you say to him? And he was like, I said, don't fucking talk to me. And I went, well, I said, well, then what happened? And he went, the guy just sort of turned around, done. I was like, yeah, it has done. to be, yeah. Done. Yeah. You know, and that's sort of, how I think we're almost at that point now where you do you, hun, right? But don't talk to me, don't come near me, don't look at me, I'm done. Yeah. I'm not having it. And don't don't feel like you have the right to ask me these things. Don't feel you have the right to come along and say, Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? None of your fucking business, son. Basically. Absolutely none of your fucking business. And step back because I'm angry. 
an ang an anger righteous anger. It's good anger. It's anger to protect yourself. And as I say, I don't think these young kids now have that in them. They're too worried about being angry, looking angry. Oh, you're getting angry. Of course, I'm bloody getting angry. I'm supposed to. I'm meant to. Yeah. As protective. Well, they're, they're, they're told to, they're, they get angry when they're told to be angry about stuff that they don't understand. Well, yeah, it's a good point. You know. So someone misgendered someone. So yeah, get angry about that, but have your entire future destroyed. That's don't worry about it. So this is where we're, don't worry we're, about we're, it. we're at with that. What if it's like the things they're getting angry about, they don't make sense either. And usually they don't affect them personally. It's like a project, projective anger. So they'll get angry about that black lives matter and stuff and the extinction rebellion without looking into any of this stuff. But they won't get angry about them having to force their kids to wear a mask or them wearing a mask on a bus where they can't breathe properly or they can't, they feel like shit. That's affecting them. No. And it's almost like this greater good, isn't it? Brave New World thing. What are you doing oh, yeah, 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 to yeah. help me? What, what, yeah, what are you doing for the party? Like, fuck you know, party. yeah, 1984 job. Yeah, fuck the party, exactly. But that's that's another what app, actually, because obviously you brought up the sort of, you know, the Black Lives Matter Extinction Rebellion thing. So Sainsbury's, this week are a what half. So obviously Sainsbury's and um, Argos, which I think are now the same company, I think Argos are owned by Sainsbury's. Anyway, um, right. their non-white staff are given safe spaces away from the white staff. No. So, yeah, do you not see that? I, yeah, I, that's yeah. That's the first yeah, I yeah. heard of this. Yeah, so, so obviously, so, you know, <laughs> so they can, you know, talk about their oppression and stuff like that. And, you know, they don't have to have the threat of having white people involved. And obviously it's been called out across the board by lots of black people that not only find it, you know, outrageous um, in terms of division, but also massively racist and defensive. Um, I know plenty of people that are not white and I don't know a single one of them that needs a fucking safe space. These aren't weak people. No. Um, and I guarantee, you know, I bet, I put on Twitter, I bet my weird left bollock, because everyone's got a weird left bollock, it sort of, it sort of just hides away from the right one for some reason. Sure. Um, I yeah, I, I um, hush hush. How do I? But my weird left book. I bet that that whoever came up with that bizarre policy, virtue signalling, attention seeking policy, it would be a white person that done it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know, and and it's just like, in what world are we living now, where that's a thing, and and you know that it, not only is it a thing, like, but it but it's not a thing in like, in one particular corner shop or cafe in like Hampstead Heath it's in freaking Sainsbury's which I don't know how many Sainsbury's there are across Britain but would it be thousands oh, it's certainly thousands? It's, yeah. Yeah. it's got to be it's got to be there's, there's probably about eight in Derby yeah if not more um in in Derby and, and the surrounding area so yeah at least the high hundreds in the country and um and that policy is, is being implemented throughout that I mean this is insanity it is that's that, that, that like yeah. if you can imagine working there so you go into the staff room oh man my legs are aching oh man i've been fucking on my feet for fucking eight hours can i sit down sorry mate you're white and we're having a conversation oh yeah. do you know what i mean if it, if it was me i'd sit down and go, shut up and sit down and go oh and rest my legs but you know people in fear of being like i'm a racist will just go all right, sorry. And, and you know, and it's like, what? that's racist, isn't it? You've just created segregation. Yeah. After, didn't we fight segregation? Wasn't that something that was bad and people sort of got rid of it? Did that happen? Or did I, or, or I just totally misremembered? Like... You'd have thought so. You'd, even the fact we had to fight it in the first place is mad. It, it's, it's, it's gone backwards, massively yeah. so. The whole it's, world's it's, gone backwards. It's, it's, it's extraordinary. Like... Was Rosa Parks a thing, or do you know what I mean? Did she exist, or did that? Did I just imagine that as well? Because that's where we're heading. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> she's going in there, and I'm saying to you, we, we were having a conversation. And you're going, but are you talking about black stuff? Like, what are you talking about? Like, do well, you exactly. have to be having a conversation about whatever that might mean? I don't really understand what the subject matter is. Do they have their own rooms, or just like a little? Like a cornered off area with some traffic cones. Oh yeah, don't come in this area. But I, I, I can't remember actually. But I think it was it was just saying that they would have a safe space where they could converse and talk about basically their oppression because white man bad. 
Um, and I'm thinking, like, looking at this, okay, you're all working at Sainsbury's, you're all on minimum wage. It doesn't really matter what colour, what sexuality, whatever you are. None of you are in a particularly great state Absolutely. in terms of yeah. oppression. You're working for Sainsbury's, yeah. where they, they're paying you sod all to be on your feet all day and deal with annoying customers and stack shelves. Like, there's no winners here. Um, you know, and if you believe in the virus, you know, as a lot of these people probably do, you know, you've you've had to be right in the thick of it the whole time while everyone else was apparently shielding and being safe, all for minimum wage. So, yeah. you know, this isn't a racial issue. I think, you know, it's just, I don't get it. But then, but then when I say that, you know, you'll get all oh, showing your privilege again. Uh, all right. Yeah, it's like, what privilege? I don't, I don't understand that at all. I mean, of course it's all nonsense, but the common sense has done a done a wrong one, and it's it's gone. I mean, even just to be able to people to say showing your privilege again, or even going along with any of this stuff, is utter madness. Like my father-in-law was in um, the shop earlier the other day, and he, a, a guy with a mask on said to him, "Why why isn't your mask? Why aren't you wearing a mask?" As the same old shit. And he went, "I got COPD, don't have to wear one." And the guy went for a mask went well i'm protecting you what are you doing to protect me i mean where do where does that logic come from i mean i can't the guy actually said that yeah there's his words he said i'm i'm doing this to protect you what are you doing to protect me that's like getting everybody else to hold a shield and then so what did your so what did your father-in-law say to that oh he just he clotheslined him took a run up um, no, he just... That's he, what... No, that's what that's, <laughs> he just ignored it. He just went, whatever, and then carried on. This is ridiculous. I should, mean, we live in a little village. Should have, should have just... Should have just ripped his mask off and gone, there you go. Now, now I'm protecting you from that shit. Exactly. Or took his mask off and put it on his own face. Like, the guy had a mask yeah. on. That's what he should have done. Your father-in-law should have taken his mask off, put it on, and gone, well, I'm doing this to protect you. What are you doing to protect me? Exactly. And then see how long that, that could go back and forth. Just like slapstick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was speaking to the guy at the shop yesterday, and he was telling me about how he, he's got his degree in business, and he kept just pulling his mask down every word. And I'm like, just take the fucking thing off. Just take it off. You're behind a plexiglass anyway. Not that that matters. And what every, all of them, Gareth, is like, do you understand the fundamental Achilles heel here is every test that they're tested for, unless there's something I don't know, which it could well be, obviously, is a PT, PCR test that is only testing for a genetic material has no bearing on whether you're sick or diseased. So all of these stats you're bunging at me, all of these things we're seeing on the news are billy bullshit because the test is not suitable to, to test to test <laughs> to test for what the outcome is. It should be as far as I can understand it, the PCR test is a research tool that should be just used to see if there's a genetic material in it. End of says it on Can't, the packet. Yeah. Literally says it on the packet. Can't tell you how much. Can't you tell you whether it's alive? Can't tell you you whether you're ill, infectious, or diseased. Can't tell you anything. Can't like tell that. you. Can't tell you anything basically. Can't and the level they anything. amplify it to. In the words of Kerry Mullis, the inventor, he said, with, "With with the level of amplification, you can find anything. You exactly. can find anything. You can find whatever you want." He said, you know, "Use that's a whole the lot of, of whole lot of making something out of something. Doesn't really mean anything. And then, so yeah. really, off the back of that, shouldn't everybody be having a blood test?" Every day. That's the only thing could show you whether you were ill or not. Am I wrong in saying that? Or or, or just being ill. Or just being ill. Yeah, that's the yeah. other. Yeah, or, or, or being ill. Yeah. It's just like, you, you know, oh, I've got a really bad cough. Really? Because I've been texting you for like 10 minutes and you've not coughed once. Yeah, but someone said that I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone said oh, I did. Okay. I think I got it. You must have yeah. one then. Yeah. Yeah. But this this is the other thing, like people don't take stuff into into account. There's no grey area, there's no conversation about anything. So where I am, I mean I'm I live probably just just well, I live between Derby and Nottingham, but just sort of Derby side, thankfully. Um up the Rams. And um <laughs> Nottingham's basically just about to be shut down again. Now it's gone top of the league in terms of cases, it's the only time they'll ever be top of the league. But what they're not taking into account is the fact that there's two universities in Nottingham. So you've got Nottingham University and Nottingham Trent, right? Both of which have their own testing procedures, which are outside of that, of, of your regular testing stations, you know, right. where you turn up in your car or whatever. And so you're they're tested. Out. Yeah, we well, are saying, yeah. They were tested. Uh, imagine doing a test like that. 
Um, they, you know, ask. they've tested approximately, 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 I think it's like a hundred thousand students, right? And so, obviously, that's an extraordinary amount of tests. So then, the case numbers, which aren't cases because no one's ill, hmm. but positives, yeah. are higher. And they go, "Oh God, yeah, Nottingham's crazy." So, but, but no one seems to be taking that into consideration. So you've got a certain city. Oh God, it's got a high number of cases. Yeah, but how many tests have been done in that city? Oh, hundreds of thousands. Well, okay. So is it not normal then that the cases in that city are going to be higher than the city where they've only done 12,000 tests? Do you know what I mean? Like, call me, yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm not a doctor, but that seems logical, a logical question to ask for me. And But that's not being asked. It's like, oh, no, they've got loads more cases than there, so we'll shut that place down. But, it's common sense. But, but even but one done... case... But even one case and one test, based on a PCR test, means nothing. No, it doesn't. And the other thing is as well, like, because I keep seeing this, like, oh, yeah, but it's not just deaths, like, hospitalizations are up now as well. And you go, okay, well, let's have a look at how that works then. Okay, so now, when you go into hospital, it doesn't matter what you're in hospital for, what you go there for, you know, whether it's because you clotheslined the masketeer in Tesco's. Yeah. Um, you end up in hospital, the first thing they do is do a COVID test, right? So that's for everyone now, whether you're going in for, you know, I've split my lip, my leg's broken or I've had a heart attack. You go, you get, you know, a COVID test, right? Okay. So then that comes back as a positive because of the ridiculous PCR test anyway. So say you get a positive, you know, you're now a COVID hospitalization. Yeah. That's how that's, that shows on the statistics. So people go, oh, hang on, how many people are in hospital with COVID? Oh my God, that many in hospital with COVID. No, he's in hospital because his leg fell off. Yeah. That's why he's in hospital. Yeah. Um, but he's, oh, yeah, but it's COVID case. So people are going, oh, well, hospital, co you know, so because in the mind, when, when someone says to you, COVID hospital admissions are up, I think someone's got symptoms of COVID, they've gone to hospital. Exactly. That's what you're meant to think. Yeah. But then when you look at it and you go, well, actually, that's not the case. So if I stepped out of the office and I got run over and I got taken to hospital, things stuck up my nose, tested positive, Oh my God, Gareth's been rushed to hospital with COVID. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. No. He got he got he got hit by a Renault Megane. But it doesn't like. Do you know what I mean? But and that's that's how they cook these figures, and and then they use those figures to shut down towns and cities and just destroy everything. And it's so frustrating to watch because there's no critical thought going on, and you just want to say to the knobhead in 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 the shop, you know, do you know this? And then when you have this conversation with these people, it's like rubbish. Of course, he is. Like, he won't know what, what the rubbish? PCR test is. He wouldn't have a clue what the PCR test is. He wouldn't have a clue what he's been tested for, how he's been tested, what it actually means. He wouldn't have a clue. And if you've got 15 minutes to stand there and try to speak to him while you're trying to buy, buy a packet of like, like uh, custard creams, you just think, I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. He's not going to understand it. Like, I'm going to have to literally stand there for 15 minutes. And then he's going to go, what are you doing to protect me? Like, I'm trying to tell you the truth. That's what I'm trying yeah. to do. I'm trying to tell you that the very fundamentals, the very cornerstone of this narrative is bullshit. I'm not saying that there isn't a, a nasty cold out there. I'm not saying that. I don't know. But what I'm saying is the test won't tell you whether it is or not, or what it is or not. So the fundamentals of all of these numbers and all of this data is bullshit. It's going to be bullshit every time you test. It's not going to tell you what you need to know from the test. The test isn't faulty, the test is just not applicable for what is being used for. And you said, and I said, I think we both said this, isn't it funny that they waited to, for Kerry Mullis to just pop his clogs last October, August, before they started using his November. test? Was it November? Died in November, yeah. Yeah, good timing. Good timing, isn't it? Yeah, good timing. So we'll use his test because you put all these things together and call me a conspiracy theorist, I'd love it. There's a lot... This is ridiculous we're getting the covid everything your dad's been taught about everything we've been taught about covid passports now in ireland have you seen them ones yeah yeah, yeah. well yeah. united airlines are using them in the uk so obviously i know united are an american airline but in their flights to uk they're they're, they're having they're going to be using these covid passports you know and it's it's, it's the scam it's, it was always the scam and it was it was always the plan for it to be everywhere you know do you know what i mean and i tell you what's funny is like you know, all these protests have been on. I've been all over the country, tens of tens of thousands of people. Ain't no one got a sniffle. Exactly. Weird that. Lots of asymptomatic people. And and the, and the other thing as well, 
is like this these these are another couple of what halves so you've got 7,000 scientists and medics have come out this week now i don't agree with the whole kind of shielding the elderly because i don't even think we need to do that but but that's their thing okay so shield the elderly and you know let everyone else go back to living and going to the pub and go to watch football and living their lives because that's the whole point of life and hancock just dismisses them immediately yeah Seven thousand scientists and medics. So, so you know, when people give it a oh, bloody tinfoil hat, no, well, the scientists and medics. You want to, if you said follow the science the whole time, and then yeah. it's very much, yeah, but not that science. And so you want to follow witty and balance who are on the payroll of Bill Gates, but you don't want to listen to these seven thousand people that are saying, look, guys, it's, it seems really odd to me. And the other thing um, was in France, they came out. Well, they came out a while ago and it didn't get a lot of press and then they came out again. And what they were basically saying was that they had tested, again, PCR test, they had tested bodies from like as far back as summer last year, right? Right. And they were testing they were testing positive for COVID. And again, it got zero coverage, nothing. Don't want to look at that. Look over there. Look at that. There's, there's a... There's a um, is that a raccoon? There's a raccoon there on, on the doorstep. Can you see it? Yeah. yeah. And you're like, no, I was looking at this story about France. Oh, look at the raccoon. Yeah. All right, mate. Um, it's very much like that. So, but I look at that in, in two ways. So, okay, in terms of the narrative, at least, if they're getting positive COVID cases from bodies from August and July last year, so a year ago, okay, either A, there is no COVID and this is the whole freaking point. And the fact that the PCR test is going to pick this up on everyone. Mm. And if you dug up, you know, even more people from even longer before, they would test positive as well because this test isn't testing for COVID-19 anyway. That's right? the thing. So that's what... Maybe we should do that. That's Start what... going digging people up that have passed away from a year ago and have a little... And just go. explain that. Yeah, just explain that to the church warden when he comes out. It's fine. <laughs> it's for a podcast. Right? And it made me and you... To be fair, because I'm pretty busy, but I mean, like... I want to get. I want. I, um, I like to be more hands-on, if I'm honest. But that. But that's option A. So you know, you can look at that and go, well, actually, that just shows the test is going to find COVID in everyone, even going back like way back. So this whole kind of you know pandemic hoax is 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 you know a scam. But the other one, then, even if you believe in the virus, and you believe in the new virus, all that kind of stuff, is okay. So this virus then was in France in the summer. So if it was in France in the summer, it didn't come from bat soup in Wuhan mm. in November, December. So your whole narrative is out the window. It also means by that point, it must have actually gone worldwide, in which case everyone's freaking had it, in which case everyone's all right, it's not got a crazy death. Right, let's go back, open the pubs, let's yeah. go back to life. So either one of those scenarios kills the narrative, hence why look at the raccoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of look at the raccoon moments, isn't there, at the moment as well. Um, <laughs> everywhere, mate. Everywhere. Let's have a look. <coughs> Bear with me. Um, let's have a look at this um, chubby funster. BBC's £390,000 a year, Stephen Nolan, not one of the Nolan um, sisters, one of the most utterly... He might have met one of the Nolan sisters, though. It whole, in one breath. Um, like he, chases a a man for, he chases a man for not wearing a mask. Now, this is one of the most morbidly obese people you'd probably see for a while. Chasing someone down the street, shouting at them, why are you not wearing a mask, as they came out of a supermarket, I believe. Now what the? It was a what uh, petrol going station. On oh, was it okay? Yeah, I just spoke to my dad about that actually this morning, and I I said that, and the first thing I noticed was the fact that Stephen Nolan's wearing a track a track suit that's blatantly never seen a track, <laughs> um, and and the other thing is the fact that he's clearly not worried about his health or health in general. The guy is 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 about six or seven stone overweight. Absolutely. Um, you know, and that's like some someone will say, "Stop being fattest." It's like I'm not fattest. He's fattest. He's the, he's the fattest. Boom! That was a Jimmy Carr one. That yeah. Uh, I'm not even a fan of Jimmy Carr, but there you go. But um, but yeah, he's not a particularly nice guy, um, Stephen Nolan, and um, you know, he's BBC to his DNA, a narrative manager, and yeah, you know, what are you doing for your three hundred ninety thousand pounds a year of license fee money? I'm standing in you know, Texaco forecourt. Yeah. waiting for a lad to come out who's not got a mask on. Now, you don't know why he's not got a mask on. Exactly. Surely you, know nothing, you know nothing about him. Yeah, you know nothing about him. You don't know his mental ability, um, disabilities, if any. You don't know his physical disabilities. Yeah. You don't know that the guy's, you know, not uh, suffered with 
asbestosis or whatever, you know what I mean, or or an insanely uh, depleted VO2 max lung capacity. You don't know anything about this guy, but you just know that he's paid for some petrol. And you, with your camera crew and your and your big fat microphone, you're going to stick mm. it in his face and shout at him for not wearing a mic. You know, what is that about? Also, you know what I mean? just, like, regardless of all of that stuff, on top of it, which could set him up for a £9,000 fine, by the way, is... I hope it does. It's just fucking rude. Yeah, it is. It, well, he thinks he thinks he's the cook reporter, doesn't he? Cook is probably. Do you know what I mean? He, he, he thinks he's Louis Theroux, but wow. um, but but it's it's the joke of it. And you think about it, it as a, as an analogy, it's it's the equivalent of like you know, someone was waiting outside a lift, and then someone sort of walking out the lift, and you go, "Why didn't you take the stairs? You don't look disabled." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, where's your you wheelchair? Yeah. yeah. Where's your wheelchair? Where's your crutches? Like you, you what? You wouldn't do that, to someone? No, that's exactly what he's done. He's filmed it and also put it on the biggest TV network in the country, and that's acceptable, is it? The guy should be um, jailed for that. He should do a good couple of months in jail for that. That's harassment. On a, that, that is absolutely disgusting. But and then on top of that, he's morbidly obese and clearly doesn't care about his own health. If he come out and he's got what are you doing to help. <laughs> He's the type, isn't he, to put the mask on and go, what are you doing to protect me? Well, we've shut the fucking restaurants, yeah. so we're doing all right, to be honest. Yeah, we're still doing takeaway, so you're fucked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the joke of it, isn't it? And I saw someone had made a comedy, like, image of, like, a morbidly obese American woman in a big motorised thing with, with a mask on, shouting at people, saying, you know, you're killing me. <laughs> it's like, nah. No. Nah. If if you're that bothered, if you're that worried about health, do you know what I mean, you've you, you've been locked down for six, seven months. You've had plenty of time to try and, you know, because that's what I do. Do you know what I mean? Like, I did that, to be fair. Like, when this whole thing started, you know, I called bullshit on it because it was blatantly a scam. But at the same time, I didn't know if it was a real virus. I didn't know if it had been released. Um, I didn't know. We didn't. Well, we didn't know. So my attitude was very much, right, OK, well, I'm going to obviously exercise, try and keep fit. I, I stocked up on vitamin C. I stocked up on vitamin D, vitamin A, iodine, magnesium, um, supplements of stuff that would assist. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and I, I went out for runs. You know, I did the 7, 10Ks in seven days. And, and I was just trying to just right, keep my body fit, lungs full, um, you know, supplements and stuff like that, help my immune system. And then you get to a point where you realize, oh, okay, here we go. All right, this is a scam. This is bollocks, blah, 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 blah. He's not done any of that. So he's not bothered. No, of course but he's going to bark. But he's going to bark at some bloke that he knows nothing about. Absolutely, and this is the backwards world we're we're living in. That's acceptable behaviour. That's acceptable behaviour. But for, but not wearing a mask, walking out in the field on your own is not acceptable behaviour. We live in a topsy turvy, inside out, on fire, shit everywhere world. And I, I quite frankly, I'm where you are now. Now, if I just had enough of it, or I'm just bored of it, or um, it's ridiculous. I'm not yeah. watching the updates. Don't care what a new measures. Not doing any of it. I was never doing it anyway. And now I'm just literally just not even bothering to look. So the next one was oh. we knew this was coming. Army on the streets of Birmingham. We didn't know it was Birmingham. We weren't that 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 specific. Welcome to Johnson's rollout of fascist Britain. That's your dad's um, title. So I found this, and I think I sent it to you um, or the other way around. Can't remember. Um, so there's yeah, a guy. You sent it to me. Yeah. There's a guy chasing. Um, a couple of they look like kids to be fair they don't when you say they army kids. you think kids in fancy dress yeah yeah you think army you think robocop with um loads of guns hanging off him you know it's not that they're kids with military gear on walking up and down the street knocking on doors offering free pcr useless covid tests door to door yeah the guy yeah. chases him down the street what half is going on there and this is going to be happening everywhere by the looks of it. Oh, it'll be everywhere, mate. Yeah. What? What? My first point though, when I saw those two kids, so they're in camo gear because you know you need that in Birmingham. Yeah. But it's lucky the cameras wearing, could pick them up. To be fair, they're both wearing high vis vests on top of the camo gear. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to be seen or not? <laughs> it's like I did. I was looking out the window and I just saw this high vis vest floating. Just... There's loads of them floating down the street, and I ain't got a clue. It's freaking yeah, me it's out. Like this, like, yeah, like this, like like the 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 suit that the guy wears in um, 
cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Yeah. Like this orange jacket, sleeveless jacket, just walked past my house. Yeah. I yeah. don't know if it's a sign. Is this a symptom of COVID? Just seeing, like, luminous jackets everywhere? Because I'm freaking out, mate. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Uh, a symptom of COVID is that your arms and legs disappear. <laughs> That'll go. Yeah. They'll use that. Yeah. So these, yeah. these kids were doing that, and then there were some older guys there, and he kind of basically, this guy in Birmingham, chased them back onto the bus, which was quite humorous, really. Um, weird times, isn't it? It is weird times, mate. It's very, very weird times. But, but you know, it was always coming, wasn't it? We knew it was coming. It, it's, it's just, you know, it's even surprised me a bit, the sheer craziness of it. Like, I, 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 I cancelled my trip to Scotland yesterday. I'm absolutely gutted about that because I... Um, it was my mate's 40th a couple of days ago, and we'd planned for a year. He'd said to me, because obviously I used to do the, the tours of Isla and, you know, up into Mull and Tyree and, and you know, Arran, and all these Scottish islands gigging. And so every time I was on Isla, like I love peaty whiskey anyway, so I used to do the, the distillery tours. So it's like nine distilleries. So obviously I'd come back and talk to my mates about, oh, man, it's amazing. So Tell was like, I've always wanted to do it. I was like, right, we'll do it. So for his 40th, we booked a hotel, and we're going to, you know, go up for four days. I'll drive us up there, get the boat over, stay in the hotel, do three distilleries one day, three distilleries the next day, three distilleries the next day, mm. breathe the next day, and then drive, and then drive, you know, get plenty of walking in around Isla as well, beautiful, beautiful island in the, um, you know, inner Hebrides, and then go and, you know, drive home. Be an amazing trip for the two of us. Been mates since two were like, God, eight years old. And, um, so I messaged the people up in Isla yes, yesterday. I messaged them last week, sorry. Basically saying, what is, what's it like there? You yeah. know, it's obviously Sturgeon, the great Nick Tater. So I was like, um, he came back to me. He was like, look, don't book the boat yet. Give me a couple of days. I'll talk to a couple of the distilleries because a couple of them are closed. So I'm like, well, I wanted to do all nine, but okay, a couple of them are closed. So the seven open, fine. They're not doing the main, like, tours, but I, I know them. Obviously, it's a small island. Probably about a thousand people live there. I know them so I can... Yeah. I'll have a word and we can sort of sort out like a private tasting for you and your mate and blah, blah. I was like, mate, legend. Um, and then obviously then she brought in the other things a couple of days ago. So it's done now. So basically I said to Turl, I was like, right, so we can go to Isla. We can get the boat over. So that's 100 quid, probably 150 quid for fuel, 300 pound for the, for the guest house for the two of us. So there's a fair few quid before we've done anything. Um, you, there's no distilleries open now, so you can't go to any distilleries. So that's pointless. Um the hotels, because they don't have pubs there, so the hotels where you can have a drink, you can sit outside only. Bear in mind, this is Isla in the end of October. Do you know what I mean? Lovely. So freezing. Yeah. Lovely. Freezing. Um, so the, you can do that, or you can get a takeout of beer or whiskey, but you can only get it till 6 p.m. <laughs> when did right? this come in? So this is a new thing, 6 p.m. So this came in, so this came, she announced it Wednesday and it's implemented from Saturday for 16 days. So obviously that includes our trip. So I said to her, I said, mate, I'll be honest with you. Like, if you want to go to Isla for the views and we can hop over to Jura and we'll take a drive to, you know, where George Orwell wrote 1984 and all that stuff, we, we can still do that. Like, that's fine. But it will basically be a case of loading up the car with beer from England and whiskey from, you know, Morrison's mm. and driving it up there and trying to do our best. And so he was like, well, it's a lot of money and blah, blah, blah. So we're going to try and do it again next year. So... I'm just going to drive down to him um, in Hampshire and we're just going to basically I've ordered some kegs of beer from my local brewery and we're just going to go out walking around the South Downs and stuff and do that as mates drinking beer. Yeah. But it's not the it's not the whiskey trip we were meant to do. And so I'm now looking at it. OK, OK, this is me. So I'm whinging. It's very first world issue. You can't go on a whiskey tour. But then you go, all right, but that guest house has lost out on that money now. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And those hotels have lost and have lost out on that revenue now. And that ferry companies lost out on that revenue now and all the things that go along with it do you know what i mean and my local petrol station isn't getting my money for the fuel now and so you know i'm not gonna buy a coffee from that petrol station either so all this stuff adds up and then it's like okay but that's not just me that's everyone else that was going to be going to the distilleries on those times blah, 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 blah. and you you tell them that by not even the country but the world and everything is on its ass and all these businesses are on their asses and everyone like i spoke to my mate nicky i've not spoke to him for a while but we grew up together we've known each other from primary school he he's he came on i did a podcast with him yesterday yeah um and he was saying you know, day, day before yesterday and he was saying like he's had to let 50 people go 50 people now unemployed mm. 
because he can't open the place he was meant to open because of the restrictions they put on him. And you just like, okay, so that's 50 people unemployed. But times his experience by all those other bars and by those other restaurants and by those other cafes and those other sports venues and live music venues and theatres and comedy shows. You know, yeah. do you know what I mean? It, it's a just knock destroying on everything. Yeah, people don't understand the knock-on effect. I liken it to the best analogy I have. Do you remember we used to put the pennies down in our machines and the penny used to go jot down? Dun, 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 dun. The pennies are stopped. There's nothing. And the trickle-down economy is just dried up because it's dried up from the top. They've just stopped. So, as you say, those guys have no longer got jobs. How are they going to pay their rent? How are they going to pay their bills? How are they going to... How are they going to um... So then there's landlords out of pocket. Those landlords then can't um, can't go and... Again, it, it loops around. Go and put petrol in their car. They can't pay for things they need for their kids. This is complete and utter tyranny financially. And this is the main aim for me is has always been... Don't want to... Cull the population, get rid of the elderly because you don't have to give them their um, their pensions because you owe them a lot of money, and also crash the economy and make everybody dependent upon the state to bring in a so, uh, social credit system like China. And it is then two things. Once you've got a digital currency and once you've got a cash of society, then we're fucked, absolutely fucked. And it all comes back to the digital passport. My theory is here, and it is a conspiracy theory, it's just a theory, is that given that the PCR test does fuck all, doesn't actually give you anything, the actual beep, your green for go, or your red for no, or your amber for just stay in the airport, like Tom Hanks, um, that will come from your social media output, and it'll be a compliancy green, or a compliancy red. So that'll have nothing to do with the actual test. They'll say it's the test, but it'll actually be how compliant you are. And that's when the actual green or red or go because they can give you any result from that test because it's not tested for anything anyway so my I, my kind of view is that the algorithms that they're setting up and the data mining of Cambridge Analytica say is the fact that they're going to give you a compliance score and that's the only green or red you're going to get that's just a theory but it yeah, I, I, isn't I, coming from but, a but, test but, is it but no it's not and the, but that's what they do in China that's what the credit system is in China mm. if you're a dissident of the state so me and you'll be fine if you're a dissident of the state, um, you know, you, you can't get on aeroplanes, you can't ride trains, you know, if you don't pay your taxes on time and X, Y, and Z. So, again, their social credit system is is, is based, you know, on, on exactly that, on data mining, on finding exactly what you're doing at all times. Um, and that's the, whole, that's the whole idea. It's always been the whole idea to, you know, and, and this is another thing where people say, oh, conspiracy. It's like, well, not really. Like the World Economic Forum, Davos, the 1%, that they're literally putting the Great Reset on billboards on the side of, of bus shelters in England. They're telling you. You know, the 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 the, the leader of, of the World Economic Forum has just written a book called The Great Reset. No, COVID-19, The Great Reset. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, mate, it's in your face. It's in yeah. your face. And people still, oh, tinfoil hat. If I hear that again, I swear I'm just going to headbutt someone. Yeah. Um, but that's that's the thing. It's, it's, you know, it's so obvious now. It's there, they're saying, they're, they're like the vampire that's got to tell you, you know, you've got to invite them in. They're letting you know what they're doing, so you invite them in. It's almost like it's some sort of code, you know, that that's what they have to do. And and it's so blatant, it's 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 extraordinary to watch, really. Well, people do come out with that, and I struggled with that for a long time, with doing this research of why would they tell you, why would they tell you? There's two reasons why they tell you, and I, I don't know if you, what your opinion is on, on this. Revelation of the method means that they have to tell you what they're going to do so you have the chance to stop it. And if you don't, all the karma is on you. Remember, these are occultists. They believe in karma. They believe in um, Sabbatee and Frankism. They believe in all of this occult ritual. So they'll tell you what's going to happen, giving you the chance to stop it. And if you don't, the karma is on you. And also predictive programming softens you up for it so it doesn't feel that weird. Um, they're the two that I can think of. What are your thoughts on why they would tell you what they're about to do? I think I think exactly those two. I think there is an occult thing. I think you know the vampire is 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 an example of that. Where in in the tales of of vampires, you they can't cross the threshold unless they're invited. Right. And then once they're invited in, obviously you know they can rip your neck off. Um, so there's no rules in tearing your face to bits, but you have to invite them in first. There is sort of some kind of you know honor among thieves in that sense. Mm -hmm. Another bit is like you say the predictive programming, and that's been so obvious. I mean, we were talking probably April May about the cancellation of Christmas, and at the time people were going, "Oh, shut up!" And now it's like, yeah, they're canceling Christmas, mate, and they're and they're doing it in such a way 
that they're pretending that they don't want to do it. Yeah. But like I saw, I saw a, a poll, a fake Shut poll that, that Sky Sky News put out today, where Sky News Sky News was saying that um, the the majority of Britons support the cancellation of Christmas and staying away from family at Christmas. Why would you, you support that? Well, you don't support it. It's nonsense. But what it is is it's right. it's it's a compliancy drill. So it's a case of you know people are too frightened to step out of the box so if they see a poll that says you know 75 percent or 80 percent of britain support it then well well do you want to be in the uh 20 percent outcast or do you want to be in the oh no no i'll be with the 80 yeah 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 cancel christmas it's fine i'll just you know masturbate into a gym sock rather than spend time with my family what what i should be doing you know so again there's that predictive programming and another bit i think a third one going back to um what we were talking about earlier is that they're trolling us yeah you know, it's almost like, you know, the the torture of a victim where you're just almost, you know, you're playing a little bit with them. You're just toying with them a bit. Do you know what I mean? Taking the piss. Yeah. Tell you that, yeah, you know, I've opened the window for you to get out, safe in the knowledge that they're bloody hogtied and they can't get out. Absolutely. Um, and it's a little bit of that, I think, as well, of yeah. just trolling the population. Someone else mentioned that in a podcast a couple of days ago. I think it was Charlie Robinson. There was a term for it. I forget what it is now. But they like to uh, show you what they're doing. They get a kick out of it. They get a kick out of going, oh, I've got one over you. And I don't know, And you're doing this this sort of research that we both do, and you've been doing it a lot longer than I have. There are lots of people like that in this industry. There's alternative media as well. They like to come in, cause trouble, and then kind of hint that they're causing trouble. Before we go, well, what we've seen a lot of like controlled narratives, I think, at the moment. And a lot of people going into even things like, like the um, stand-up X protests and that lot. Of, You've seen a lot of things going in on there that are very, very strange, including that woman who got knocked off the chair that got knocked off the got knocked over twice. The first time that you've watched the video, she blatantly throws herself into the police officer. The second time, she looks like she's been sucker punched, but then ten minutes later she's doing an interview. If you're an elderly lady and then you can tell from the video she's not an elderly lady, she's in her fifties, she's not elderly as she's kind of assumed to be from the dress up. There's all sorts of weird shit going on, isn't there at the moment? There's loads going on. There's loads of infiltration. But like we've spoken before, you know, if they were infiltrating the miners' strikes, do you know what I mean, in the 80s, then, you know, MI5 were, were, were in, infiltrating that. I mean, as if they wouldn't be infiltrating movements to oppose this. Do you know what I mean? Of course they will be. I, I don't, you know, I, I'm, you know, my dad, that's what, it's why my dad works alone. It's, mm. it's why he always has done, like, for that very reason. Um, and so he's surrounded by family and people that he trusts implicitly, but it's a very small team and that's for a reason. Um, that was a, the thing I think was an issue with the whole TPV thing, that there was so much infiltration in that place. Like, you know, I used to come down from Derby once a week to do an episode of the band and I, I hated it in there. Yeah. I literally used to drive in to London as late as I could possibly do, you know, and still you know put some effort into planning the show um do the show and people would go out for a beer and i was straight in the car and out and home to derby and i wouldn't get home till like one in the morning or whatever but i felt i hated it there i hated the atmosphere there i could i could just see infiltration left right and center mm. uh you know i like to think i'm quite perceptive in that sense of you know smelling a rat and yeah there's lots of that there's lots of that going on with all this stuff. Like, you know, we're supposed to be doing a protest in Canada next weekend. Right. Uh, but obviously not, not in Canada, but obviously done uh, online. So I'll be giving a speech and so will my dad and I'm getting emails left, right and centre where people are in fighting there and there's been an infiltration thing. So people are stepping away and it's just like, mate, we we're supposed, you know, come on. Yeah. I don't think we need to be careful not to throw the baby out of the bathwater. Like, um, this, this, um, declaration that went into the, uh, you took, you mentioned it earlier into the House of Parliament, they just brushed it aside. There's a few nefarious characters there as well that can be linked, but that doesn't mean the 7,000 scientists that have signed it are all nefarious. You, you just can't throw the baby out of the bathwater because you've got a couple of people, or a group of people, causing trouble at the Stand, e stand Up X things. doesn't mean you can throw the whole thing aside and say it's, it's all... Do you know what I mean? It's all sullied. No, no, of course it, not. No. This is you the whole point. That's just... why they do it. Oh, absolutely. P people just need to be smart. Um, and streetwise and do what they know to be right and feel to be right at the time and not just sort of go along. Because I think a lot of people do that, like they get on, on a wave of something, whether it's a protest movement or whatever, 
and they just sort of flow along with it where they that they, they don't have control then and i'm very much kind of nah i'll do this and i'll do that and i'll do this and i'll do that but it's it's on my terms i mean yeah. it's mainly on my terms because i've got a two-year-old but it's on my terms and i'll do x y z i will write my speech i don't send my speeches to anyone to be approved before i do it like none of that is happening and if you still want me to speak with me dictating how I'm going to do it, like I'm not dictating what anyone else is going to do. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm not a nasty bastard, but on what I'm going to do, if then I can't do that, then I'm not doing it then. And mm. that's fine. And good luck to you. Like, I hope it's amazing, but I'm out. And I think if, if everyone does things in that sense, then you can't get coerced into doing stuff, you know, and he can't end up in a situation where you're like, Oh, I didn't realize that he was, 77th Brigade it wouldn't matter because you didn't change anything on what anyone said anyway you did what you wanted to do yeah. um, I mean I'm much like that with this Canada thing like there's there's one in Toronto and there's one in Vancouver so we're doing them both in a day now they wanted it live so I was like okay what that would mean with given the times of the speeches for me I would have to be in this studio at about half past 11 at night right. to do the Vancouver one right now that is doable I don't want to do that but that's doable. Whereas my dad would have to be at half 11 at night or 11 o'clock at night in his flat where he's got neighbors. Yeah. Giving, giving a passionate speech live. Well, you can't do that. No, can't do that. No, so, not. so we've gone back and just said, you know, we will we'll pre record them. We'll, we'll do them properly. And, you know, we'll use all decent camera equipment and we'll make it mustard and we'll send them across to you. Um, whether they're going to be happy with that is another thing, but if they're not, then I'm sorry that you're not, but, you know, I think you need to dictate your own rules a bit. Yeah, you do. You need to have your own boundaries, and you guys know that better than any others. And especially in this sort of research that we do, is it's you constantly having kind of thoughts of is this person trying to lead me down that way? Don't I get it all the time, Gaz? I get emails all Loads the time, of it, mate. and all the time from people. And I'm no like I'm a no. I'm not to my family. I'm a boy, but I'm no one in this industry in a sense. No one really knows who I am, but. They, if I get that, I can't imagine what you guys get. Let's go back, but just before we go, let's just have another what if moment. This is probably the what if of the week, and that's the theme we can have. Um, ludicrous agenda serving Gucci selling two thousand six hundred ta- pound dollar tartan dress for men to continue demasculating of the mouth. A two thousand six hundred dollar dress tartan dress. I mean, we could, I could pull that off. You could probably pull that off. And, um, well, you could pull it off at Halloween because it looks like a freaking pumpkin. Have you, it's mental, isn't it? So what's going on here? Yeah, then? yeah. I mean, you know, it, is it Gucci trying to get headlines and free publicity? Maybe, but it's not good publicity, and it's not going to make me go and buy anything Gucci. Not that I would anyway. But it is odd, and you know, the demasculation of of men has been something that's happened for decades. <laughs> And I put that, you know, not solely responsible, but it's it certainly plays a role in in the fact of this time in history and and the protest movement and who's standing up. Where are the men? Like you're hearing that exactly. everywhere. Like yeah. Australia, where are the men? Like these things, these protests. Most of the protests I've been on across the country are organised by women. Now that's not a bad thing, but where are the men? Mm. And it's that masculine part of men and that masculine part of women is is the point the bit that says fuck off mate yeah yeah well, that's, that's masculinity concept. that that's yeah. that's masculinity and and obviously people go oh, toxic masculinity yeah okay that you can have you know levels of masculinity where you're grabbing a well actually i don't think masculinity grabs a girl's ass i think being a twat does oh, that pervert, i don't yeah. think it's masculinity at all yeah but that's how they you know you would see it you know or men that just sort of rule over women that's masculinity well i don't think it is i think what masculinity is is it it's that bit of no mate no chance yeah. I'm not having it. Masculinity climbs up a ladder, goes into a burning building, grabs someone out of it because I'm not having this fucking happening. Mm. And so they've wanted to destroy masculinity for a very long time because, you know, if, if everyone had their masculinity, would we be putting up with it? Fuck off, stick that with your ass, dickhead. That's what masculinity would do. Mm. And so, you know, through, you know, what they're putting in the water, what they're putting in food, um, through programming, through media, through education, um, which is why very few young people fighting. Um, and and also, you know, through this 
you know, nonsense that Gucci are doing and all these others are doing. It's taking away masculinity. Absolutely. It's making people ashamed ashamed of their masculinity. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my white masculine privilege and all this sort of bullshit. And that's that then is, is, is chipping away at the very essence of what makes us go, no chance, mate. Yeah, and we and need that's to not get that. Ac- that's not an accident. Yeah, we need to get that back, yeah. And I, I'm like, you know, I'm going to start injecting masculinity. Yeah, I'm had, I I'm had enough. I, I, I ask to... me anything, just, just uh, in the drive-through. I uh, just, I'm, yeah. I'm like, fuck off, don't care. What are you doing for the greater good? Don't give a shit. Everybody's responsible for their own wealth, health, and well-being. I'm not responsible for your shit. Don't put it on me. And you're not responsible for yeah. my shit. I don't want you to be responsible. I don't want any presidents or prime ministers or anyone on this planet to be responsible for my well-being because then I'm not in control of it. I don't want someone else to be able to whip the carpet from underneath me at any point. I'll never give anyone that. And take fucking responsibility. This says just it's for men to disrupt the toxic stereotypes that mould masculine gender identity. A fucking tartan dress. What? Yeah, that'll what sort f- it. That'll yeah. sort it. It's got a Peter that'll Pan collar. That'll sort domestic collar. violence. <laughs> it's got a Peter Pan collar, which we all know Pan is a lot to do with um, to do with Satanism. Um, can't remember the actual link there, but Pan is a, a definitely a connection to Satanism there. So that will probably be a nod and a wink with a Peter Pan collar there. I just think we've lost the plot. We need to get back some fire in our belly and, and a fire under our ass, and we really need that now. And I'm not talking about violence, but yeah. I am talking about stoicism, and I'm talking about going fuck off too much. No. Yeah, but me- metaphorical violence in the sense of like. You know, instead of just stopping the car every every five yards to open the window and ask for, please, sir, can I have this? Please, sir, can I have that? Is this okay? Just, I'm at a point now where I've, you know, I'm putting my foot down and, and the window wipers on. Yeah. And I'm having it because we have to do that. We really and do. so that's my that, that's my attitude. But in terms of anger, like you know, oh, love and light. Fuck off with your love and light. Like I don't have a problem with anger if it's channeled right. I think anger is very, 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 very powerful if it's channeled correctly and it's not, you know, used for, for, for wrong and it's not stewed inside of us so that we get freaking, you know, stomach cancer and die. It's, you know, no, let's channel this anger and let's aim it at where it needs to be aimed and let's do this. Yeah, what they're doing with um, Black Lives Matter and Extinction Rebellion is that they're knowing that these young kids are are angry and then they're using it co-opting that anger and putting it into a direction that suits them which is only going to make them more angry in the end gareth we've done an hour that's been what half episode two yes mate i just did a weird thing with my hands it's not not sort of some sort of symbol did Um, you do did you do like a west a west side thing i think so but a little bit more arthritic but yeah but you're east side surely aren't you sunny side in norwich Uh, yeah i think we're we're on the east coast in, I'm not in Norwich. I'm on K, I'm in Caister. On the on on, on the uh, near Norwich, to be fair. Right, guys. How near? Um, forty-five minutes. Okay. In a car. It's a nice part of the world, though, where you live. It's a beautiful part of the world. I'm really lucky to live here, and I've said this to Sam, my partner, recently. Um, I'm so glad I live in a village down the seaside because although we've got mental shit here, there's only so sort of everyone's quite elderly. It's only so mental that it's kind of mental light, if I'm honest. Yeah, I can't believe it's not mental. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I'm the same. I mean, there's a few bell whiffs in my village, but you're going to get that every, everywhere. But apart, I'm like that. Like, I don't have the sea, unfortunately, where I am. But yeah, I'm so glad I'm not in the city anymore. Like, I work in the city, so I'm in the city now, and it's like fucking 28 days later. Yeah. Like yeah. just walking down the street, it's like a zombie film. Yeah, twenty-eight days um, later, past the sell-by date. Yeah, it's just it, it, yeah, it is like that here. I mean, Derby was on on the road to that even before all this nonsense. But yeah, it's it's just very odd. It's a very odd place. Very odd people. <laughs> really, really you know? weird. We're leaving. A- well, just to, to put to put it into context, like last week, like some guy. Like, so we got the Into Centre, which isn't too far from here, which is like a shopping centre. Some guy, like just walking down the street, some guy just came flying out of the Intu Centre on a scooter. <laughs> like, no no helmet on, mask on. Right. And just came f- on a scooter, flying out, like, like like a proper, like, you know, Vespa. Just came flying out the fucking supermarket, uh, out the shopping centre. So you drove it's it like, all the way through it, then, I'm assuming. Y- yeah. 
just drove it through it. Yeah, it's like what this is. Oh, it's Derby, isn't it? Oh, cool. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. I thought it was weird for a minute, and then I realised I'm in Derby. <laughs> yeah. When I grew up, I grew up in a little place called Fetford in, in Northwark, and there was guys that used to dress weird. So we had a guy that used to put marigolds on that used to wave at cars that went past, marigolds. And we had a guy that used to dress as a leopard that go around, just went around, just did shopping. But he dressed as a full, 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 top to bottom leopard, leopard suit. Normal. Absolute normal for Norfolk. Amazing. Yeah, there's others. Amazing. That's just the start, mate. It's brilliant. And I kind of like admire that because I could see myself doing, going full falling down batshit crazy at some point if it's oh absolutely 100 percent. although i bet like the marigold guy is now like looking around in veronaville going fucking knew this would catch on yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah i just had to stick with it for 30 years and here i am yep yeah 30 years but i'm a trendsetter now everyone's up to it yeah he's not pointing at cars now he's just going fucking wankers yeah like fucking else. stop copying me <laughs> Is the, the leopard skin guy never really caught on? I think he's dead now, so that kind of yeah. I might might, might have to revive that, but I can see a lot of people. Maybe we'll end it on this happy note, having a fall down moment, having a full Joker moment soon. It's coming, isn't it? Yeah, I, I can see myself leaning over someone who's dead next to their golf cart. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. can see that. Just yeah. looking at, I'm just saying, you know, fucking idiot. <laughs> Again, again, I can really see me losing it some days. I just think you're probably just best to go to bed now, mate, because you're only going to cause a bit more trouble. You're only going to add to it. But that's but that but you know what the falling down thing is is interesting because that's what's going to happen, I think, and I think that's what did happen with the George Floyd stuff. So when obviously that George the George Floyd murder, you know those protests where the stuff was burnt and bricks was left by the side of the road and stuff. They knew what was coming, yeah. Because obviously it was completely planned, but they knew what was coming based on the fact that all these people have been locked down. Mm-hmm. These people have been locked down for months. So obviously there's a lot of anger about what happened to George Floyd, rightly so. But also there's all the other anger with the uh, I've been stuck in my fucking house. I've been away from my family. I've lost my job. I've lost everything. Blah. And it was almost like a way that the system. The establishment made such a huge thing about George Floyd. Bearing in mind, people get murdered every single day by the police. They, all over the world, they made such a big thing about the George Floyd thing. So it would almost focus everyone's attention on that, to focus the anger, get the anger out, get the anger out on that issue. Because they were absolutely petrified that if actually people let that anger stew and took it out on the people that were actually locking them in their fucking houses Mm -hmm. and taking away their jobs and stopping them seeing their family and stuff like that, that they would be in some serious trouble. So it almost feels to me like that was a bit of a, a, a purpose, a pur- purposeful sort of valve release. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Of of, of people. Yeah, I um, agree. Get... You could look at this whole COVID thing like that. Look what was happening in France and China before this was happening. Before or how Hong busy Kong, yeah. were those streets? Yeah. Sorry, Hong Kong. How busy were those streets and those yellow pro- vest protests and everything? That suddenly just got swept away, didn't it? Could that just? Well, be yeah, just got, it, got made, it got made. It got It got made illegal you know and that's what they're trying to do here aren't they trying to ban protest um and that's the whole point you know make it illegal exactly. and just use it you use public health as as an absolute you know bullshit excuse but it doesn't matter it's illegal it's a whole fucking point guys yeah that's the whole point yeah it's been an hour. I know you've got another podcast to do, Gaz. So, um, I have, mate, yeah. so uh, Yeah, what have, guys? This would be out on the Facebook page of Iconic. I'm not sure if it's going to go on our Iconic's platform or not. Um, I'm not sure about that yet. I think it's going to go on the YouTube page. Um, so, yeah, check it out on Iconic's Facebook page and my YouTube channel. And I think it's going to go on their YouTube channel as well. So, guys, second episode. I think we're going to try and do these every few weeks. Um, really enjoy this. We've got some great feedback. So, everybody who's been watching this and sending stuff in, I really, really enjoyed the light-hearted look at the mental weird shit going on. So, guys, comments below. Let us know any com- anything you want us to talk about, anything you want us to cover. Anything you want to say, guys, before we go? Bye. That's a good one. Yeah. I, I, I find that's often good at the end. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. See you later. Off your pop. Off your pop. Toodle pit.